Hey everybody, nice to see you again. Got to say I'm actually incredibly excited for this one. Not only did I want to do this anyway, but many of you asking for me to continue down my Ososan analysis rabbit hole definitely helped in motivating me. So this is my start on character deep dives, and I'm going to be starting with an often overlooked and surprisingly deep character. Chibita. Yeah, that's right. I decided to start this series out with side characters. I'm mainly going to keep this relegated to recurring side characters, so I'm probably not going to cover characters that show up rarely, as there just isn't enough information for me to properly analyze them. So characters like Kinko-chan, Homura, and Flower Fairy just do not have enough canon information for me to look into them. And I'd like to give you guys an analysis with actual substance instead of a bunch of what-ifs and speculation. But characters like Chibita, Totoko, Iami, etc. have enough background and canon appearances to warrant a deep dive into them. Of course that doesn't mean I can't do episode analysis, but that'd be getting ahead of myself. After I cover side characters, of course I'm going to cover the Matsuno brothers, saving the best for last. Anyway, to start this train off, we're going to be covering Chibita, so let's get started. Of course, I want to give you some history, so let's begin with Osumatsu-kun, as this is really the series that Chibita got to shine the most. And just to be clear, in the Showa era, it was pretty common for characters to have roles like quote-unquote actors, so there would be many episodes and storylines that actually weren't canon. Naturally, I'm not going to focus on any of those episodes here, or in any character deep dive, because they just aren't canon. In the 1966 version, it was treated more like an ensemble cast, and we got to see Chibita pretty frequently. Something that's been consistent throughout all iterations is that Chibita was an orphan, a few years younger than the Matsuno brothers. In his first iterations though, he acted often as an antagonist purposely causing trouble for the brothers. But that was quickly changed, and instead, Chibita became a well-meaning and equally curious and mischievous kid. The best I can describe him is sort of like a ragamuffin archetype, like a little scamp looking around for adventure. He's feisty and fun, but has an air of innocence to him. Aside from that, he also got characterized as being the little kid that Matsunos would occasionally pick on. Of course, not only was this to make conflict in certain episodes, but I also believe this was to show Chibita's age as younger than the Matsunos. They tend to get him to do things, even things he wouldn't otherwise do, proving his naivety as a smaller child. Besides all the obvious physical differences, like him being very small, their ages and maturity levels are shown also through their actions. An interesting fun fact from the 1966 version of the show, it was revealed that Chibita was raised by cats in a canon storyline of his. Unfortunately, as of recording this script, I cannot find the episode, but if I manage to in the editing phase, hopefully I can show some clips. However, it's important to mention, because since he was raised by an army of cats, it influenced a major part of his personality, which is his love for animals. Though I don't really recall many Osamatsu-kun episodes where that was the focus, instead it was just shown as a small personality trait. And of course, in the 66 version of the show, there wasn't many serious episodes to analyze, Instead, it was focused purely on being comedic. And while there's nothing wrong with that, unfortunately, that doesn't give me a ton to analyze. Especially considering all of Chibita's major traits are either surface level or they're played off like jokes. You know, like the being raised by cats thing. Unfortunately, you may hear me say that for most character deep dives, as the 66 show just was only focused on comedy. However, in the 1988 version, they finally started making character-centric episodes, as well as episodes that delve into more serious topics. In fact, Chibita actually gets some of the best episodes in the 80s show, so let's talk about that. <laughs> If you're unfamiliar, the 80s version of Osumatsu-kun is actually super fascinating, and I really recommend watching it if you enjoyed the wacky fun shenanigans of the six tuplets, or if you enjoyed characters like Chibita, Yami, Dekapan, etc. They all have a lot more screen time than they do in the reboot. 
Chibita really shines in the 80s version of the show, and I think in this version of Osamatsu-kun, they define a lot more of his traits. After all, in the 60s, it tended to be more of an ensemble piece where most of the cast got similar amounts of screen time, and if there were stories dedicated to a specific character, it was typically in the Showa fashion of skits that weren't canon to the overall show. The 80s version of the show still does do this occasionally, but it is quite a bit less, and there are a lot more stories that were actually canon to the universe. Throughout the 80s version of the show, Chibita is still very much this rambunctious ragamuffin kid, but like I mentioned before, the 80s version of the show defines characters quite a bit more. Instead of characters just purely being vessels for surface level gags, this is where they got a lot more depth in the series. In fact, I think Chibita gets some of the most depth here, as he gets promoted from being a small part of an ensemble from the 60s version to a main character in the 80s version. In fact, I'd like to talk about one specific episode, episode 7 of the series titled Chippy Tub Becomes a Mama. It's one of the few genuinely sad episodes, and honestly, the episode itself deserves its own video, but I did want to bring it up as I really think it's one of the best Chibita-centric episodes. In summary, the episode is about Chibita finding an abandoned baby and deciding to take care of it, despite himself being an orphan child living on the streets, but then later struggling trying to give the baby back to his biological mother when she changes her mind and wants the baby back. I don't know why, but this episode genuinely makes me tear up every time I watch it. I think it's because not only does it showcase the bad conditions Chibita lives in on a daily basis, for example, showing that he can't afford a bottle of milk or towels, and that he's literally going through garbage to see if he can find something for the baby, but also it shows how much Chibita is mentally affected by having no parents. He finds this abandoned baby and immediately feels a connection, because that's exactly what happened to him. But he had to fend for himself. He thinks how hard that this baby's parents were like mine and just abandoned him. Well, maybe I can take care of him and at least he won't be all by himself like me. I'll be able to fill the role of a parent for this baby. A role that never got filled for me. Then the mother comes back, wanting her child back, and she's racked with regret that she even thought getting rid of her baby was a good idea. Everyone else in this episode, like Yami, Dekapan, and Six Tuplets, are a bit conflicted at first, because not only do they see all this effort little Chibita has done to take care of this baby, but they also see this mother weeping, clearly remorseful for what she has done, saying she only did it out of desperation, knowing it probably won't happen again because she clearly loves the child. Of course, by the end of the episode, the child does end up with his real mother, but this devastates Chibita. Not only is he now attached to the baby, being able to extremely relate to being abandoned, but I think there's also something deeper, something subconscious. His parents never changed their mind. Chibita never got to go back to a loving family. Chibita never got to hear his parents say they regret abandoning him. Even though he barely knows the mother in the episode, he resents her for the fact that she even thought abandoning a baby in a park was a good idea. He likely sees his own mother in her, even though he doesn't even know his own mother. Of course, I can't go all into this episode. It really deserves its own video, but like I said, it's honestly really fascinating. It shows a very real side to Chibita, some of the very real issues that affect him, not only literally but mentally, as he lives life as an orphan on the street. This episode doesn't get brought up much if you don't already Ready to watch Osamatsu kun, but I think it plays into a lot of personality decisions for when he's an adult in the reboot Osamatsu san, as it's one of the few episodes to show more of the reality of being a street orphan. And just like I promised, this is actually a canon episode to the universe. So yeah, I just don't think many people watch Osamatsu kun, so it doesn't get brought up that often, especially by newer fans. I know I've mentioned that there are canon and non canon episodes a few times now, and I really hope that this doesn't get confusing. I just wanted to make it clear because I know people tend to get confused and will watch an episode or read a manga chapter and assume it's canon to that character's backstory or something similar. An example really good for this specific video is actually some people think Degapan is Chibita's dad, 
and that it was actually from a non-canon skit. I just wanted to clarify, because I do understand that it can be a bit difficult to distinguish the episodes that are canon to the Osamatsu Zen universe. I also just wanted to make it clear that despite how wild some of this shit is, I want you to know that I am not kidding that this is real. Okay, sorry for the tangent, let's move on. I don't know about you, but I am a firm believer that one's environment shapes who they are, especially in childhood, and Chibi is a very good example of that. His adult self is quite different, but the more you look into his personality and how he acts, you can definitely understand where he's coming from and what aspects of his past seems to affect his future or present self. As an adult, Chibita is still his hot-headed and feisty self, but he is a lot less curious and adventure-seeking than his younger self. Which makes sense, considering his background as a street orphan. The older he's gotten, the more he's gotten to know the tough world around him, and he's had to focus on doing everything he could to work hard and survive. Despite his rough upbringing, he does seem to be in a better spot than he was owning his own Odin stand, and even doing odd jobs around Tokyo to support himself. We actually get to see when Karamatsu goes to live with him that he has his own place. And of course, we don't get to look much at it, but knowing his personality, it's very likely he doesn't really live outside his own means, and only gets things if he absolutely needs them. For the most part, you can kind of describe Chibita as the opposite of the Matsunos, or some sort of foil to them. He's a hardworking, common sense kind of guy. Of course, this isn't the case all the time. You can't expect complete consistency from a gag anime, but for the most part, his adult self could be described like that. In fact, this aspect of his personality is very much caused by his upbringing. Now, some may hear that and think I'm saying Chibita was better off for his rough childhood, but that's absolutely not the case. Yes, his rough past made him more likely to work extremely hard to get where he is today, but that in no way means what happened to him was right, or that the Matsunos having a better family means that that hurt them. Basically, with any situation, there's going to be good with the bad, and bad with the good. But with that logic in mind, I think it makes a good case for Chibita being some sort of foil character to the Matsuno Six Tuplets. The Six Tuplets are a group of brothers with a fairly good home life, where they are taken care of and loved by their parents, but in turn they are coddled and so never leave the comfort zone and become neats in that process. Chibita, however, was a street orphan that fought tooth and nail to get where he is. But as a result of that, he also has abandonment issues and no family to lean on. Of course, they aren't complete opposites, but it is interesting to look at them in that lens. Aside from the Matsunos, I seriously need to talk about his relationship with Iyami. Chibita's relationship with Iyami is pretty fascinating, especially when you realize how different he acts from his normal self around the guy. For the most part, Chibita seems to just live a normal adult life working hard and taking care of himself, but he is still very close with Iyami, and he does a lot for the guy. Looking at Osamatsu-kun, it's pretty clear that Iyami filled that parental figure role in Chibita's life, and that relationship is still pretty fascinating, because it's not as clear-cut as the father-son dynamic. Actually, not at all. Sure, Chibita saw Iyami as some sort of father figure, but Iyami treated Chibita like some sort of helper for his get-rich-quick schemes. I don't think that means Yami didn't care for Chibita. I think he does, very much. It's just a very complex relationship. Sure, Yami cared for the little guy, but he still asked him to help on a lot of his schemes, some of which weren't really the best things to teach a child, and Chibita, being young at the time, doesn't really realize what he's doing and just follows this guy he really looks up to. I'm sure this also causes some complex feelings in Chibita. Sure, he's older, wiser, and he can look back on a lot of old schemes knowing that some of them were pretty bad things to do. But there's still a part of the guy that cares about Iyami, you know? Sees him like a dad. So even though Chibita is one of the few characters with the most common sense, he ends up in some of Yami's schemes anyway. Maybe because he feels obligated to. Maybe because there's a part that still wants to impress him. Now on to my conclusion. <laughs>
Unfortunately, Chibita is a very overlooked and underutilized character, partially because some fans find his design ugly, which is a bit of a pet peeve of mine. Maybe I'm just sick of seeing the same uber handsome unrealistic anime boys all the time, but I don't know, maybe I like to have a character that looks a little different every now and again. Not only that, but he's actually a really well-rounded character. I think a lot of the Somatsu san cast is. I think I just wish people weren't always dismissing things purely on how they look, because Chibita is actually a favorite character of mine. I mean, I have a whole cringe Nene OC ship with him, because he deserves some happiness. Tangent out of the way, Chibita is actually a very well-made character, and an interesting foil to the Matsuno 6 tuplets. It's really fascinating to see Studio Piero to be able to make a character consistent over years and years, even using past versions of himself to influence characteristics of an adult version. You don't often see that with reboots. More often than not, characters and reboots will stay completely the same with minor changes, so it can be really refreshing to see a character actually change, but still see that past iterations had an impact. Overall, Chibita's a really good character to start this series off with. He's well-rounded, with serious character development between series, and it goes to show that you can still write an interesting character with serious aspects, even in a comedy. Something I've always loved, not only as a fan, but as someone who has written her own stories, is when characters have multiple layers to them. It can be pretty hard to find characters, especially in comedies, that just aren't surface-level attributes. It's honestly why I've loved Osamatsu-san for such a long time, and probably why it's still my favorite anime, even all these years after it's come out. It can be really difficult to put serious attributes into a comedy without it being forced or out of place, and it's equally as hard to give characters depth when they could have taken the easy route and made each character a surface level gag, and Chibita is a great example of this. Not only does he have all this serious depth, but he's still really funny. I just wish people didn't overlook him so often, or that the studio didn't underutilize him that much. Uh, he really deserves more screen time, but really that's all I have to say. He's a great character and please just give him more screen time. Alright, end of the video. Man, I am so sorry this took me months to do, but I've had a seriously crazy start of the year. Fortunately, I am going to have a lot more time to make content like this in the future, so I hope you're able to stick around. Before you go, I have a couple short announcements to make. First, I made a Patreon. Please consider becoming a patron. Link the video somewhere on screen or in the the description so you can see an explanation of all my tiers and what I'll be offering. I am going to be offering some pretty awesome exclusive content on there so please check it out. And if you can't support me there, which I totally understand, <laughs> I'll also still offer my art commissions, which I'll leave the information for in the description. I offer regular commissions and pay what you want commissions on Ko-fi that start at a dollar. You can either contact me on my social medias on screen or at my commission email which will also be in the description if you are interested. If you you stuck around this long. I love you and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Thank you.